this video we're talking about how to find the roots of a quadratic equation when we have to complete the square and then find roots that are complex. So normally when we're given a quadratic equation, the first thing we want to do is make sure that our terms are in descending order, which means that we take the highest degree terms or the terms with the largest exponents and put them first, and then we take the terms with the smallest exponents and put them last, which means we have to reorder this as 3x squared minus x plus 5 equals 0. From here we can see that we have just a regular trinomial and we want to see if we can factor this into two binomials, but there's no combination of the factors 3 and 1 and 5 and 1 that'll get us to negative 1, so we can't factor this as usual. What we can do is see if we can complete the square. In order to complete the square, we need to make sure that the coefficient on our x squared term is 1, and currently the coefficient is 3, which means we need to divide through every term in this equation on both sides of the equal sign by 3 in order to get rid of this coefficient. So dividing through everything by 3, we'll get this 3 to cancel here and we'll be left with x squared. Here we'll get minus 1 over 3 times x, and here we'll get plus 5 thirds is equal to 0 because 0 divided by 3 is still 0. Now, as you know, to complete the square, what we'll do is we'll take the coefficient on our first degree x term, so where we have x to the first power, or just x, we'll take the coefficient, including any negative sign here, and we'll do negative one-third divided by two, which is the same thing as negative one-third times one-half. So we can either divide by two or multiply by one-half. It's easier to multiply by one-half because we're starting with a fraction here. So multiplying by one-half, what we're gonna get is negative one sixth, then we want to take this result and square it. When we square that, we're going to get a positive 1 over 36, which means 1 over 36 is the value that we want to add to both sides of the equation in order to complete the square here. So what we're going to get is x squared minus 1 third x, and here's where we want to add our plus 1 over 36. So plus 1 over 36, this is going to be what we can find the perfect square of, and then we're going to have to say minus 1 over 36 plus 5 thirds is equal to 0. Now if we factor x squared minus 1 third x plus 1 over 36, we're going to get the perfect square x minus 1 sixth squared. We can find that by factoring, or we can just take this value here, negative 1 sixth that we found earlier, and plug that in here, negative 1 sixth. But either way, we get quantity x minus 1 sixth squared, and then here we need to find a common denominator between negative 1 over 36 and 5 thirds. Well, we'll multiply this 5 thirds by 12 over 12 to get 36 in the denominator, and what we'll end up with then is negative 1 over 36 plus 60 over 36. That of course will be equal to 0. When we do 60 minus 1, we're going to get a positive 59. So this is going to be a positive 59 over 36. When we subtract 59 over 36 from both sides, we're going to get x minus 1 sixth quantity squared is going to be equal to negative 59 over 36. Now remember the whole purpose of this was to find the roots of the quadratic equation and we completed the square. What we needed to do is solve for x in order to find the root. So our next step in order to solve for x is going to be to take the square root of both sides. So we can take the square root of the left hand side like this and we can take the square root of the right hand side. We just have to indicate that this is going to be positive or negative square root of negative 59 over 36. When we take the square root of the left hand side, we get the square root and the square to cancel with one another leaving us with just x minus 1 over 6. On the right hand side here we have plus or minus. Remember when we take the square root of a fraction, we can take the square root of the numerator and denominator separately, so we'll get square root of negative 59 over square root of 36. Now here we know that the square root of 36 is going to be equal to 6, so we can go ahead and simplify that. The square root of negative 59, we can go ahead and say, is the same thing as the square root of negative 1 times 59, right? We haven't changed the value at all because negative 1 times 59 is negative 59, so we're just saying the square root of negative 59 here. Now remember that when we have two values multiplied together inside of a square root, we can separate them into their own square roots. So the square root of negative 1 times 59 is the same thing as the square root of negative 1 
times the square root of 59. And as we know here from working with complex and imaginary numbers, the imaginary number i is equal to the square root of negative 1. So we can go ahead and replace this value here with i, which means that after all that simplification, we're going to end up with x minus 1 sixth is equal to positive or negative square root 59 times i, all divided by 6. Now in order to solve for x, we just go ahead and add 1 6 to both sides in order to get this negative 1 6 to cancel on the left. So we'll get x is equal to 1 6 plus or minus root 59 i over 6. And because we have a common denominator here, if we want to, we can go ahead and combine these fractions and get x is equal to 1 plus or minus square root 59 times i all over 6. And these are going to be the two roots of the quadratic equation. And of course we notice that both of those roots involve the imaginary number i, which means that these are complex roots of the quadratic equation. If we want to write out these roots separately, we can say x is equal to 1 plus root 59 times i all over 6, and x equals 1 minus root 59 times i all over 6.